Hello and welcome. I'm Peggy. And I'm so glad. Take time to stay with us today because you and I have the chance to learn a lot. And I, that's one of the privileges of being alive is being able to learn and open up your mind to other possibilities and what's going on around you and to reach out to our young people and our children. And I'm so pleased to have Alan Etheridge here with me. Alan, God love you. Uh, thank you, thank you for coming. See you. Alan Etheridge is the director of the Metropolitan Arts Council. And people say, well, what is that? Well, it's plenty. Oh, it's what, plenty. Absolutely. How do the arts play in and how important is it in a child's life and oh, in absolutely. a person's life? Absolutely. Well, I mean, I think the arts, especially in terms of any type of academic curriculum, should be a, a, a major part of it. And, and they inevitably are the, the first areas to get cut when there are budget cuts at the level. And it's like, it's, 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 it's kind of like maddening. It's like Chinese water torture because it's like these are... We all know it's so important. We, there pro there's proven um, data and information about how important the arts are in a child's development, but yet they're the ones that are cut. So um, one of the great th programs that is part of the Metropolitan Arts Council is a program called Smart Arts. And we started this back in 2002 with three federal grants from the U.S. Department of Education. And it's based on the theory that when you take an artist and pair it an art, he or she with a teacher in the classrooms of science, social studies, math, and English and language arts, and you plan out an integrated unit of study that the knowledge is retained, it's held longer, and academic achievement is improved because it involves students. You're not just lecturing in a traditional teaching environment mm -hmm. or using an overhead projector or a PowerPoint. It's, it's involved, it's kinesthetic, it's, it's manual, you know, it's auditory. So pairing a dancer with a math teacher and they dance out, you know, certain graphs on the Cartesian plane like parabolas, hyperbolas, you know, ovals, all of that, all of that stuff, um, really makes, makes a huge difference in terms of how that knowledge is processed and retained and then recalled. So we've been doing this for, gosh, four, it's going on its 14th year. Yeah. And when those funds expired back in 2007, at the end from those grants, um, our board of directors got together and said, well, you know, what do you think? Do you think we can, can continue these programs and expand them and keep, and keep it going? Because we've, we've had such phenomenal success while we've been uh, receiving these federal funds. And I said, well, we won't know unless we try. So sure enough, you know, gosh, um, eight years later and, and moving forward, we've been able to raise over 1.68 million for that program. That's fabulous. And we have a presence in 54 schools in Greenville County. So this these, these, this impacts our public schools. Public schools, absolutely. Here in the upstate. Here in the upstate. And our children, because arts in the classroom. Right. It isn't just learning to draw or learning no, not to at dance all. or right. in a course. In and of a, itself, that's very important. Sure, but, it is. But the arts, when they are integrated into those core curricular areas, can, I mean, just catalyze great things like improved academic achievement and less apathy and greater student engagement and uh, fewer referrals to the office, you know, uh, fewer behavioral problems because y the arts engage students. They engage students with their hands and with their ears, and, it, and it's not just, you know, recalling and rote memorization from a book or from a lecture. So, now, what what actually, Alan, do you do? I mean, you're involved. Oh, gosh. The, the arts in, in the upstate. Sure. It, well, you're the, talking about the Greenville Symphony, the Little right, Theater, right. all these programs that are an outreach. Right. The easiest way to describe what we do, Peggy, and we've been doing this, gosh, going on 43 years now, uh, the easiest and most simple way to describe what, what the Metropolitan Arts Council does is we're like the United Way for the Arts. We are first and foremost a funding source for arts organizations, individual artists, and arts education programs throughout Greenville County. So our constituency are those individual artists the arts teachers and the arts organizations that comprise such a phenomenal cultural community here in Greenville. I mean, when you think about it, here we are, a city of 60,000 people in the northwest corner of South Carolina, and look at the cultural amenities we have. I mean, I could go on and on all about right, for those. those so, you know, we have new people um, moving here sure, all the time. Sure, sure. 
and some people have lived here for years and they're still not aware of what is available. I know, and it's, it's, that's another, another thing that can be very frustrating because you would think with, I mean, there's so much art going on all the time. You know, and you, you look at the amenities that have been around a while, like the Greenville County Museum of Art. Okay. And it's always free to go in and there. And it's free, and it's just free. for walking in just the door. Just to walk in the door. And it has two of the single largest collections of Jasper Johns and Andrew Wyeth in the world. And the opportunity to see something like that for free is phenomenal. Then you've got the Greenville Symphony, and I know you've been involved, very involved, with the Greenville Symphony in, in your history here in Greenville. And it's a wonderful organization. Look, look at what um, the conductor and the maestro Edward Cheechville has done for, for the Greenville Symphony. And uh, then you've got four and we theaters. have concerts for the school children. Absolutely. The, their lollipops. And uh, there are uh, and lollipops for little kids. Right. And it's there wonderful. are some of those children would never uh, know what it's like to walk into a theater and right. sit down and, and have a live orchestra. That's right. Play. That's right. They, and, and when you and when programs. you work as a volunteer and you see these kids and you see the expression on their face, it, it's a wonderful it's feeling to see it's what's happening. Absolutely. So you've got the symphony, then you've got, I mean, the Peace Center, and it's been around it's celebrating its 25th yeah. anniversary. Is it 25 I mean, years? 25 years. And okay. just the the economic impact that has had on the city and on downtown is amazing. And that's that's strictly on economics. I mean, there's such an intrinsic value that it has because what it's done for the quality of life for visitors and residents here. I mean, they have truly developed an audience for Broadway. I mean, some of these shows that they're getting in are absolutely spectacular, absolutely spectacular. Coming up, they've got Matilda, then I think that's followed by Cabaret, then The Sound of Music, and then, you know, last year it was uh, Jersey Boys, The Lion King, War Horse. I mean, and it's wonderful that we as Greenvillians in this little city of 60,000 in the northwest corner of South Carolina have the opportunity to see things like that, as well as the productions from the local theaters, Greenville Little Theater, Center Stage, the South Carolina Children's Theater, and the Warehouse Theater. And they're all done on a really professional level. Absolutely, they're wonderful. The talent here is amazing. Is, is absolutely amazing. And then you, then you can go on, the Greenville Corral that's been around for, gosh, it'll be 56 years this year. It was founded in 1960. And then you've I didn't got, um, that. you know, dance. That's with like a hundred voices. You know. Carolina Ballet Theater and International Ballet and their spring performances. And then some of the smaller arts organizations like the Greenville Chautauqua Society, which is has a phenomenal outreach in its and those are all free. Of history. And they're the all Chautauqua free. Chautauqua was all free. free. And yeah. then um, most recently, the Greenville Light Opera Works or Glow Lyric Theater that has performed at Center Stage and at the Yount Center and Fountain Inn. Uh, wonderful, wonderful productions that they're doing. Gilbert and Sullivan and then some, some of the more traditional opera as well. I mean, it's great. And, this, and here we are in Greenville. And then for visual arts, you know, things like a festival like Artisphere. You know, it's only been around... Uh, 11 years. It first started in 2005 was the first year they did it and it's consistently ranked as a top 10 arts festival in the country. Yeah, yeah. It's phenomenal. And then you have things, uh, events like Greenville Open Studios every November which is strictly about local artists living in Greenville and the opportunity that the public has to go around and interact with an artist and learn more about his or her artistic processes as well as sources of creative inspiration. And then uh, new on the landscape is the Greenville Center for Creative Arts over in West Greenville in the old Brandon Mill, where they're offering a wonderful array of classes uh, for adults as well as providing studio space for artists and great exhibits as well. It's an amazing story. It, is. it, it is really an is. Story. And I, I don't know if businesses, I have a feeling that when a business decides to look for a place to locate, you say, well, these things don't matter. They do, because the businesses do. look for what is available in this area. And what is available for To nurture employees. people, and what's right. going on in the education world and in the arts world that adds to the, to the stature of the whole surrounding. That's so right. when somebody, some company thinks, well, maybe, maybe we'll open a business, that's what they look for. Right, and, and, and 
that's so wise of them to do because their employees are going to have to have something to do. You know, they're not going to hang out at a 24-hour Walmart. You know, I mean, they've got to have something that is going to en enrich their lives, enrich the lives of their children, and uh, a, way to, a way to spend their time constructively. And that's what the arts do. So we're saying the arts is important for financial reasons. Sure. And it's also for, I, I'd almost say, spiritual reasons. Absolutely. Intrinsic value. Absolutely. Of course. I mean, and, uh, you know, you, you look at Greenville, and like I said, the cultural amenities that we have, but we, we all have to remember that regardless of whatever challenges that the arts have to face continually because of things like downturn, downturns in the economy, um, the arts are always going to survive. And we're always going to have them because I think there's something inherent in mankind that will always need to be expressed imagination and creativity and um, you, you look at how far the arts have come over the last 50 years in Greenville and it's it's quite miraculous and I think that's due to a lot of things but first and foremost this is a very philanthropic community it's amazingly philanthropic and it's a very it's a very generous community as well yeah, yeah, and man. with mm. all the renovation and all the revitalization going on there is so much civic pride. I mean, I'm proud to be a Greenvillian. I'm, pr I'm proud to, to live here. So I'm proud right. to work here. Yeah. I'm, proud, I'm proud to have been born here and educated here. And um, I, I think that that's really great. And I think that's going to continue to grow with the, with the phenomenal press that Greenville is a city has gotten recently, you know, all the write-ups in the magazines, whether it's been Southwest Airlines or National Geographic or Southern Living, um, you know, the word, the word is spreading. This is a cool place to be. Now, I've heard people say, oh, don't talk about us too much. We don't need more people right, here. Right, right. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, people I, are welcome. No, absolutely. And, and Greenville is a warm and, and welcoming, welcoming place. place. Now, we're going to go to a break and come back, and I want to talk to Alan about some things that, that influence our children with art. We'll be right back.